Hi everyone, BriefChem has just released BriefChem version 6.1 and in this video we'll review some of the new features and improvements. Let's first have a look at some important enhancements that we made to the user interface. If I want to use face recognition and I click here on show faces, I now have here this minimum score feature. So I can decide which rating of faces I want to see. If I want to see all the faces that are at least two stars, I'll click here on two stars. So you can see here that it shows me three stars and also two stars, but not faces that have one star. Also, when I click here to export all the face thumbnails, it will only include the faces that were filtered for. Now let's see another feature. For proximity, appearance similarity, and face recognition, if I add an item to the filter, we now have a zoom button here, and you can click on it to see the entire thumbnail. For proximity and appearance similarity, the thumbnail of people is now aligned and shows the top of the image. This is what the filter used to look like. And you can see here that in the new version, the images are not cut off at the top and you can see the top of the image. And here's a feature that's especially important for investigators. Timestamps now include seconds in various locations in the UI. And there's also been an end time field added to both bookmarks and close-up clips. And one more user interface improvement is that in the status tab, if you click here on the status column, it'll sort the requests according to the request status. Now we've also made a number of improvements to the response solution. So in previous versions, which you can see here, when you created a respond rule and selected the proximity filter, none of the other filters were available for you and they were all disabled both the global filters here and the geo filters here. Now the proximity filter can be set together with the majority of the global filters as well as the geo filters. And the people counting alert thresholds were changed and you can now set an alert for a smaller number of people in the frame or an area. The minimum used to be five that you could set for above and below and now you can set zero for above and one for below. In our constant endeavor to improve the performance of BriefCam, we've made some important enhancements to the performance. First, there's an improvement in how BriefCam works with the geometry of the scene. And just for a short explanation, scene geometry means that BriefCam analyzes the scene makeup, such as the horizon, and it also takes into account death perception by analyzing the changes in the size of people as they move across the scene. Now in the past, BriefCam calculated this geometry for each task, and now BriefCam saves the scene geometry across different tasks on the same camera. This saves the warm-up procedure of having to calculate a new geometry for each task, which improves BriefCam's performance, especially for size, speed, and proximity detection. We've also now made it possible for the administrator to change how often an object's XY location is sampled. This lets the administrator prevent the unnecessary use of CPU resources. And one additional performance improvement is that if the archive stream and the live stream use different resolutions, the placement of the geo filters of area, path, and line crossing set in the respond rules like here and in research dimensions remains aligned across the archive and live streams. So if I draw this line here, even if the resolution is different in the archived image, this line will remain as is. Now let's have a look at some of the administrator enhancements. Now the administrator can limit the client login to a single method using a new environment setting. So when the administrator makes a change to the setting, it will affect what is shown here in the sign-in screen. And we also made a number of improvements to the real-time activities screen. 
There are now columns for the camera name and task ID, and the items in the status column now include more informative statuses. So this enables the administrator to easily see whether the real-time tasks are running properly. Whereas in the previous version, the administrator could only see whether the task was assigned to a GPU. Now BriefCam is investing a lot of time and resources in improving our support of large-scale deployments. And in this version, we have made even more improvements. In the real-time activities, real-time activities are now retrieved at a much quicker rate improving the support of large data sets. We've also added a number of loaders to improve the user experience. So you'll now see here this spinning wheel in various locations. And this improves the user experience, especially for large-scale processing. And a significant enhancement was made in the research module. To support long retention periods in large-scale systems, Research data is now stored in two data models. A detailed model, which is a complete data model, and it includes all the objects and their details. This data model requires a large amount of storage and RAM, and it's designed to support short retention periods for weeks or months, for example. An aggregated is a summarized data model, and it aggregates the data of all the objects that were captured in each hour. This data model is lighter in terms of storage and RAM consumption, and therefore it can be used for longer retention periods, even for years, which reduces hardware costs. Now aggregated data is not displayed by default, and the administrator will need to enable this. If it's enabled, you'll see an arrow here next to the word dashboards, which the user can then click to see the detailed dashboards which is exactly what we had in previous versions. But now we also have the aggregated dashboards. And the aggregated mode includes two sample dashboards, the Retail Trends aggregated dashboard and the Smart City aggregated dashboard. And for our technical audience out there, I'll tell you about the new Lighthouse service that we've added. The service acts as a cluster manager, and it provides service discovery for other services. The service increases the stability of BriefCam's ACA cluster. And just one more thing, over the last few releases we've been updating our installers, and in this release we updated the Postgres and Milestone installers. And with that, all of the main installers have now been upgraded. So to recap, we made a number of improvements to the user interface and a number of performance improvements. We finished updating all of the main installers, made some improvements in the administrator console, and we continued to make enhancements in our support of large-scale deployments, including aggregated research data. And that sums it up. And for more information, please refer to the release notes and the BriefCam Help Center. Thanks for joining us and have a great day.